sometimes you're uh, working with a back saw and you realize something's not quite right. You look down the length along here and you see that it's buckled. What to do? You don't know what to do. You take your saw, hold it against a very solid object like a bench top and you lift it and whack it like that. And that should take care of it. If not, try a second time. When we're planing the edges of plywood, sometimes we can get fractures when we on the outcut. So what I usually do, and it works well, is just take a, a chisel cut right across the very corner. Just pop it like that. And then upend it ready for planing and take your through cuts like that and you get this nice crisp corner that looks perfect. Sometimes when you've got a piece of wood or a small project that you want to uh, put some finish on it, you put the shellac on it like this, you get it on there and then you don't know what to do about the other side. If you put four screws through a piece of wood like I've done here, flip that over, then you can apply the other side and all you've got is four very, very tiny dots in the surface that won't show when you've finished. When you're saw setting, sometimes we use a nail set, a nail punch and a hammer to set the teeth because they're very small. Put two magnets into a surface of a piece of wood let that hold it there and then tap every alternate tooth, tap those saw teeth, flip it over and the saw will stay in place. Perfect. If you've bandsawn a piece of wood and the undulations from the kerf are in the edge of the piece of say oak like I have in this case and it's a bit hard to scrape and you might not be able to plane it for whatever reason but you can straighten it with a card scraper, clamp a straight piece of wood alongside it and let the scraper ride both of them and pull it like this. And instead of the scraper following the undulation, it gives you this beautiful smooth surface as though you've just planed it. Sometimes we uh, bend pieces of wood and sometimes we cut them on the bandsaw or we might steam bend them or we might do something like that. The best thing is to take the pieces of wood that you used for the coals and you can use those to clamp the piece of wood, cinch it tight in the vise like that and then you can plane the edge or work on that edge very easily. It's a very simple trick but there you are, you've got it now, it's yours forever. If you want to check if your square is square, sometimes they do go out of square for whatever reason or you don't trust a square, you are using some ones you've not used before. If you have a piece of card stock, uh, just uh, eight and a half by 11, something like that, you can take your square, offer it to the edge of the card, strike a line and then flip over. And as long as this edge is straight, which uh, card stock is always straight, when you slide that up against it, if it's still showing square on that side, you know that your square is square. If you're using sandpaper and it gets clogged, sometimes it gets clogged at the wrong time. You might be out on a job and you don't have time to get more sandpaper. Take an eraser and use that to erase the particles. It just flicks out the particles from the surface of the sandpaper and you can carry on sanding as though it had never been used. Some of the more modern saw handles have these press stud fits where one slides inside the other and you look at them both sides and you think you can't tight tighten them but sometimes the handle comes loose. If you take two hammers, set one in the vise upside down and then tap here on each one, you'll end up with a nicely tightened saw handles. They do work, it just makes it difficult to take the plate out because you can't retract them. I found one of the best things for my clamps is to glue a piece of plywood to the surface of the heads because it works so well and it doesn't mar the wood when you clamp with it. So take a piece of double-sided tape and glue the pad 
like this. Make sure it's nice and firm. Take off the little tab and place it onto the clamp head. Bring the second one up to it and cinch it tight and that will stay on there for several years. Perfect, that is a great tip. I've been using that for years. So there you are, 10 more tips. I think you'll enjoy them for the rest of your life. Pass them on to your children, to your friends. Give them out as far as you can and we'll preserve woodworking. It's gonna be a wonderful way of engaging with tips from the past and passing them forward into the future. It's gonna be wonderful. Mm -hmm.